Well, in Reno, Nevada, this is the only place on Earth where you can race airplanes to the maximum speed of their, their abilities. Home of the uh, National Championship Air Races, 54th year. This is the home of the fastest motorsport on the planet. Nine planes at a time, going around the course. A lot of adrenaline involved in this. Check the flag, check the flag. It's basically an oval, total of eight pylons that we fly around. We have to be between 50 feet and 250 feet. Going 50 feet and 500 miles per hour, I'm gonna tell you, there's nothing that can be more exhilarating. If you're below 50 feet, you get DQ'd. If you're above 250 feet, you're considered off the race course. Gentlemen, you have a race. Kind of been a drag race off the runway, and then who's gonna hold the pylons down the tightest? And they spend all year long getting ready for this one week. We got three days of racing. Anything can happen. You're watching the Steel National Championship Air Races, presented by Reno Tahoe USA. Gotta tell you, all these people, you, me, everyone, we're in the right place for this special week of the year. Reno, Nevada, for the Steel National Championship Air Races, presented by Reno Tahoe, this iconic sporting event, the very pinnacle of performance for these incredible teams, these pilots, and these amazing machines that we will see representing so much of the history, and in some cases, the future of air racing. Great to have you with us. I'm Tommy Sanders here with Steve Stavrakakis, an air show pilot and announcer. The Wild Thing, Steve, great to have you here this time. Tommy, it's great to be back. Reno Speed Week, the world's fastest motorsport. We've got over 124 aircraft, participants hailing from 27 different states, eight other countries from around the globe, Germany, Thailand, Austria, Canada, New Zealand, Switzerland, Austria, England. They all came to challenge in six distinctly different racing classes. All right, well, our coverage this time, it's early going in the races. These are heat races to determine which teams make the final gold championships. And let's start out well, with a category that's probably the newest here, maybe the fastest, and certainly is going to be fast today. It's Jet. This is Heat 1A of Jet Racing. Jet Racers cleared out of the course. Copy cleared on the corner. Racers are moving up, line of breath. Looking good, there's 300. 4-4, four, four, back a bit. Okay, looking good. You have a race. All right, Steve, the starting protocol all achieved. These guys are ready to go. We're we're on it, Steve. And they are on it. Trust me, Tommy, the adrenaline is pumping in the cockpits. Okay, right now they're going for the guide pylon. That's the light on the mountain directly ahead of them. They have to stay in their perspective lanes until they get to the guide pylon. Once they get to the guide pylon, sharp left turn, they are racing. We're going six laps around this eight-mile course, and folks, we weren't uh, we weren't exaggerating. We said the fastest motorsport in the world. These planes will be bumping up against and sometimes exceeding 500 miles an hour, and sometimes just 50 feet off the deck. Tommy, you realize that 500 miles an hour—that's two and a half football fields per second. These guys are covering some real estate. Right now, out in front, you can see it. It's American Spirit, the uh, well-decorated jet plane in these Reno Air Races. Mike Steiger is the pilot this time around, and he is uh, extending his lead, and it didn't take him long to take hold of it. Yeah, that's uh, Ed Knowles. That's the pride of Ed Knowles Stable, the L-39 Albatross jet, built by Errol Vochedny in uh, Russia, uh, one of the top airplanes in the jet class out here once again this year kind of speed in front of all these spectators. It had to be quite a shock the very first time back, what was it, 15, 20 years ago when this class debuted. In 2001, it was actually a jet demo after Sunday's unlimited gold race between Jimmy Leeward, Randy Howe, and Jerry Galoot flying three MiG-17s. They weren't supposed to go on to afterburner, but all three were so competitive, we ended up with three swept wing fighters in full afterburner on the course. The crowd loved it, the FAA, not so much. Take a look at what's happening in the, in the battle for third place right here. This is David Culler, American Patriot. He's passed uh, Vicky Benzi and Dark Star 2. Also, Scott Barnesworth in Dash Force One. That's where the real race is right now, Steve. Now, you'll notice all three of these airplanes are the L-39 Aero uh, The class actually started as an official race class in 2002, where it was an invitation only flying all L-39s because the FAA felt with the straight wing and non-afterburner, this was a jet that could safely negotiate this closed course here in Reno. Five of our planes are chasing the leader, of course. That's the race number five, American Spirit, the L-39. This team going for their sixth national championships, folks. That is a one-plane dynasty, a remarkable thing. And how do you stay on top? How do you get on top? Let's talk to one of the pilots, Mike Steiger. This aircraft is a previous winner. It's, one of the, it's the most winning racing jet out here. We did have a, a pretty big lead today, and that's just due to we have finally tuned the aircraft. Someone that wants to catch up has to spend days, hours, and weeks 
flying the jet, honing it, uh, testing it, flying in formation, seeing where the drag parts are, slight modifications, seeing the uh, positive and negative effects of everything and the uh, cumulative average of everything gives us the fastest jets. Right side, right side. Mike Steiger there laying out the game plan. Obviously, it's a solid one. Look at this exceptional lead. As we head into the final lap of this race, and Steve, Mike Steiger, of course, this team is shooting for back-to-back -back victories here. We'll remember this playing with another pilot last time around, Rick Vanden. Yeah, that's right. Uh, a lot of our pilots will fly multiple classes during race week, so this allows our pilots to uh, swap out, uh, gets Mike Steiger some more course time, allows our race pilots to stay current, stay uh, sharp on the course, as well as giving Rick Vandem a chance to get his head in the game for the sport race that he's going to be in later on today. Well, if this was to give uh, Mike Steiger a bit of a workout, he had a good successful workout today in Heat 1A of Jet. Look at this coming into the final stretch. This is American Spirit and on their way, it would seem, to the gold match. That's a long ways off, but he is looking strong. The team, the airplane, looking very, very strong at this point. Checker flag, checker flag. But today's race was only six miles an hour off of their winning pace that won the gold last year. Coming in second place, there he is right there, Zach McNeil. Remember him from racing last year in the jet class. You're going to join us then. De Havilland, second place. And the rest of the L39s bringing it in right there. And we've got race 1A in the books. All right, coming up, World War II air trainers. A great bit of history from behind the lines. A plane that made a big difference about 75 years ago. These planes are up to date and racing wingtip to wingtip. You will be amazed at how these old heavy tail draggers can move on this race course. T6 coming up when we return. The Steel National Championship Air Races are proudly presented by Reno Tahoe. Check out visit renotahoe.com. Travel Nevada. Don't fence me in. And brought to you by Steel, the number one selling brand of gasoline powered handheld outdoor power equipment in America. found the Steel National Championship Air Races, presented by Reno Tahoe. So great to be back in town for these incredible races, the 2017 edition, and what a town, what an area, Reno Tahoe. You know, they used to say, come to Reno and win. Now they say, come to win and lose yourself. When they talk about lose yourself, a lot of times they're talking about the incredible outdoors, the environs of Reno, including Lake Tahoe, the largest alpine lake in the nation. There's all sorts of activities right close to town, just a quick drive up to Tahoe. Can't do any better than that, and we're ready to go with something else you can't do much better than. These are these incredible trainer planes from 75 years ago. This is the T6 class lined up. Looks good, up a little bit, 88. Rock the bumps. Gentlemen, you are released to the course. Underway with Heat 1A T6. When you look at the results of any of these races, all the way up through the goal, you have five or six of these planes in there. The times are so close together, and they're so tight together. This is this is really a unique class here. That's right, Tommy. The T6 class is about as close to a race of champion or spec class as you're going to get out here. They're all flying the North American Aviation built airframes, known as the T6 or AT6 for advanced trainer. Uh, the, the Navy or Marine version was the SNJ. The Canadian version was known as the Harvard. Uh, they have a 1300 and 40 cubic inch Pratt Whitney air cooled radial engine. In stock configuration, they had maximum horsepower of 600. These guys are getting around 8 to 850 horsepower, which I don't understand how because these spec classes keep them really, really tight on what they can actually do. Now, when you listen to these airplanes, you hear that crackling sound. The low rumbles that Pratt Whitney radial engine. The crackling sound is that 109 inch propeller. This, the propeller tips are actually going supersonic, creating miniature sonic booms, and that's the crackling sound you hear from a T6. That is impressive, that black plane out front. Race number six, six cat, Nick Macy. What a great lead here, right behind him, probably the most decorated of this class, Dennis Buen and Midnight Miss Three. That plane going for a seventh national title. But Nick Macy feeling pretty good about his chances this go around in Reno. Good, we had some uh, problems earlier in the week. Crew did a fantastic job getting it ready to go. And uh, 
We think we got it dialed in. We got a little bit more work to do on it. We got some fast airplanes behind us, so we can't let our guard down. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be tight. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be fast. We're keeping our fingers crossed. Today, this race 1A has definitely been fun for Nick Macy and Six Cat leading the way all the way. He's winning this thing wire to wire, Steve. But look what this yellow, blue and yellow airplane is doing. This is John Lomar. He has no championships to his name, but he's giving fits to our past six-time champion, Dennis Buin. John Lomar out there going around. And if you're first time to watch this race, Steve, you might be wondering, hey, that's harder to do. You pass it on the outside. Why don't you just stick the nose in there and go through on the inside like in all other motors? That's a great point, Tommy. Uh, with air racing, you have to pass high and wide. You can't just dive to the inside like diving into the tires on a motorcycle race or something. You have to stay out. You don't want to trade paint in air racing. And, but look at John come back again. He gave it up in the turn, but he's going back in the straightaway. Here he comes one more time. Seems to think he's got a shot at taking down Dennis Buin in the early going here in Reno. And it looks like, yes, he's done it right now. Now that's got to be frustrating for Dennis Buin to outfly him in the corners only to have him run back by him in the straightaways. I've had this happen to me in motorcycle racing. It's very frustrating when somebody's got a faster horse on the straightaway. Incredible stuff way out in front there. Nick Macy from Tule Lake, California, making it look easy here in race 1A. He is going to take the checkered flag. Checkered flag, checkered flag. Congratulations to this great team in the six cat. Yes, sir, our race 1A is now in the books. 227 plus miles an hour average by Nick Macy in the six cat. And John Lomar getting the better of that duel with Dennis Buin. That was some excitement. That battle for second place, as a matter of fact, it is our Dash Digital Cash Pass. Take a look at it one more time right here. Definitely a move and a wake up call for Dennis Buin and his crew chief. They're going to be scratching their heads before the next round of T6s. Yeah, a little shot across the bow for the rest of the field right there. When we come back, well, it's a class. This airplane has been around for more than 100 years, well over 100 years. Biplane action when we return. It's the Steel National Championship Air Races presented by Reno Tahoe. Well, there's another fast competition going on at this event. It's called the Multi-GP Drone Racing Championship. Now, this consists of 150 of the best pilots from all over the nation qualify from over 700 regional races. Now, these competitors will battle over three days in bracketed competition, and that will take them down to the final four pilots. Those final four pilots will fly in the final race to see who is the champion. This is the largest FPV, or first person view, drone racing series in the world, where they're reaching speeds of up to 100 miles an hour. We'll keep our eyes on this series all week long, definitely. Well, from that eye-popping look at a fairly recent development in aviation, let's go back to a century plus of biplane racing, which has brought us to this point right here. This is Biplane Heat 1A. Steve, we're going from a standing start around this course, 3.5 miles, and we're going to take six laps around, but the start is a different animal this time. That's right, Tommy. This is a Grand Prix-style standing start. The race actually starts at the drop of the green flag. Our pilots will go around the, the track one full time. Their laps don't actually start counting until they pass the steel start-finish pylon the first time. Now, keep in mind, too, these pilots are limited to 50 feet minimum altitude, 250 feet maximum altitude. This has always played out as a factor in the past. Let's see if it happens this year as well. So your time counts from the very start on the ground, but the lap count does not start until they make that first pass around the start finish pylon. Flag, green flag. Getting ready to start by plane. We got a green flag and we're going. Now, this is also where our teams have to play strategy. A flat pitch prop is much like a low gear in your car or your bicycle. A high pitch prop is like a higher gear in your car or your bicycle. Now, stop and think, if you and your buddy were having a race on your bicycles and you took off in first gear and he took off in 10th, you're going to jackrabbit off to the start. You're going to be out ahead of him. However, if your race is long enough, that higher gear, once he gets some momentum up, he's going to come in on you. He's going to catch up with you because now you're running in low gear and he really has a chance to exercise and get up to speed. That's the same thing our racers have to look at here. So a fast pitch prop is going to get him up and ahead faster, but a high pitch prop is going to give him more top end speed as the race progresses. Let's see how this one turns out, Tommy. Well, that's a great insight into how important race prep is 
race for these teams. You have to size up so many elements that are a part of winning a race, and these guys have done their homework and hoping for the best results out in front. Right now, of course, that's uh, Andrew Bueller in 62. You saw us inside the cockpit with Sam Swift right there in the smoking hot. It, like six of the seven planes here, is a pits-built plane. There is one Mong Sport, and that's Andrew Bueller. Yeah, and the one thing I'm noticing about Andrew Bueller is he's flying awful high in this race, Tommy. Uh, now, as I mentioned earlier, they've got a, a, an envelope of 50 feet minimum, 250 maximum that they have to stay within. And even though Andrew is our 2005 world biplane champion, in this same exact airplane, he's laid off a couple years. So this could just be a little bit of caution on his part that keeps him a little higher than he should be right now. Talking about past champions also in this field, uh, Jeff Rose, last year's champion. Uh, he was in another plane. He was in the Reno Rabbit. What happened to the Reno Rabbit? Well, it's not a very pretty story. Let's take you to the end of the gold race. And our plane was running really great all week long. We were winning heats. And then Sunday's race, I, uh, I hit Eric Zine and late in landing. It was pretty tough. On landing, uh, uh, a fellow behind me ended up running into the plane, so we collided on the runway. And boom, I didn't really know what happened for a second. It's kind of funny watching the footage, I look so confused. And the euphoria of the win and the, you know, the adrenaline of everything. I, I thought I had clearance and I obviously didn't. And I totaled my airplane and, and hit him pretty good. Uh, no one got hurt. The planes got a little bent up and uh, they were kind enough to fix it for me. Part of my recovery to come back here was make it right with Eric Zine. I can't come in this hangar unless I feel like I made it right. And my first recovery point was to get it right with Eric, fix his plane. That's Jeff Rose. We're really good friends and he said, hey, just take the plane apart, send it up here, and uh, we'll put it back together for you and make it even better. And they did. It's actually two and a half seconds faster than uh, before the crash. But yeah, it's not the ideal way to pick up speed, but you know, that's racing. What a story. I remember you saying last year, Steve, these things are a joy to fly. It's on the ground where all the complications happen. They're kind of unwieldy on the, on the deck. Yeah, you know, we've got a couple very similar airplanes in second, third. Uh, keep in mind that these airplanes are limited to two wings, fixed gear, uh, fixed pitch prop, no turbos, no funny fuel, uh, and they are limited to 360 cubic inch, but that's about where it ends. All right, the fix up on, uh, on Zion's aircraft. He said netted him a couple of miles an hour. He's needing them right now. He's getting a, a real battle with Sam Swift going right now. Bueller and Stewart out ahead of the rest of the field there. This is the this is the real duel right here. But keep in mind, way out in front is Andrew Bueller in that long sport. But again, he's still flying notoriously high. Well, he's in the lead. He's had it for a while. What would be the attraction of challenging the upper limits of our race course here? White flag, white flag. Well, the first thing you would think is maybe he found some smooth air that these other guys haven't found yet, and that's helping him go so fast. But then again, I always come back to the same thing, too. He's been out of the cockpit for a while. He just may be more comfortable up there in his first race. <laughs> he is in the final lap, and he's up. He, he, he gained some altitude once again right before our eyes here. Again, look at those specs right there. You can go 50 feet from the deck, only 250 feet up in the air. And uh, well, to both of us and all of us on the ground, it looks like he's he's been well over that. So we'll just have to see. Well, absolutely. He has appeared to be high the entire race, but it's not what we see that matters. It's what the flying committee sees. Again, everything's unofficial until we finish this race and the final determination of the race officials comes in. But right now it's looking, boy, it's all Andrew Bueller leading the way in that Mong biplane. All the others in the field again are the Pitts type model. Checker flag, checker flag. In second place, we saw that duel going on between Jake Stewart and Sam Smith, and it's gonna be Jake Stewart. Actually, Jake Stewart is gonna be our biplane winner. It was a DQ, Steve, flying too high in that one. There are your results right there. You know, Tommy, apparently, just like the original Greek Air Force with Icarus, flying high does have its penalties. That's Steve Stabrakakis, ladies and gentlemen. He'll be here all week. We'll be right back after this break to go from an old classic sort of airplane to one that's full of new tech. We got the sport class on the way. The Steel National Championship Air Races are presented by Reno Tahoe. Visit renotahoe.com. Dash Digital Cash. The evolution of money. And powered by steel. Built in America. Believing in America. 
Great to be here. When they say come here and lose yourself in Reno Tahoe, they're not uh, talking about losing yourself, especially in the dark. This is one of the sunniest places on Earth, over 300 days of sunshine annually drenching this incredible landscape of majestic mountains, the high desert, the biggest alpine lake in America there in Lake Tahoe. Just a great place to come and enjoy the outdoors. And just about count on it every day is going to be available to you to explore and adventure in this incredible backdrop, Reno Tahoe. And back on the deck and up in the okay, air, we're ready to go fast. That's what sport is all about. These planes getting ready, getting lined up. The pace plane here, we're talking about fast, has to be a jet. That should tell you something. Okay, slow it down, Abe. Slow it down. Don't jump the start. Sport pace is clear down to the course. Clear up line of rest. And racers can start downhill. Okay, racers, you have a race. Down the chute onto the race course in the in the cockpit there with Jeff Lavelle, who dominated last year. He is your defending champion from 2016. Yeah, and Jeff Lavelle last year was going faster than a stock P51 Mustang in an airplane you could build in your garage, Tommy. It's unbelievable. 400 miles an hour plus for some of these planes. They've just passed the guide pylon, made their left turn. They are in full race mode, Tommy. Six laps, 46 miles, and folks, it's going to go very, very quickly. Let's look at this right already. Big moves by Andrew Finley in the steel plane. Andrew Finley in race number 30, making that pass now. Moving into second place, that's a big move early on. Yeah, that's a very popular airplane out here. It's the Steel Power Sports Lancer Legacy 2000 called One Moment. You know, Tommy, the sport class is one of the most popular classes out here with 37 entrants this year. It's limited to any kit or amateur built aircraft powered by an internal combustion engine, no more than 1,000 cubic inch max, and they must go at least 200 miles an hour. Andrew Finley, we watch going well over 200 miles an hour. That was pretty obvious. These teams always working on these airplanes. Takes a lot of dedication. In fact, right now, let's take a look at a profile and dedication in the form of Andrew Finley. That's going to be our Travel Nevada Don't Fits Me In pilot profile. Yeah, my background, I grew up in uh, Idaho. I came down here watching the races with my dad when I was 15. All right, Jason's rolling by. We'll give him a thumbs up. Uh, it was pretty special to watch it with him and then say, you know, one day I'm going to do that. And then kind of 15 years later, was able to make that dream come true, got the plane, and then now I get to bring him to the air races as a participant. So pretty special to do that. Uh, the team's built up a whole bunch of engineers and friends that I've worked with and technicians and just a really cool group of people that are really smart um, and like to make the plane go fast. So really fun group to hang out with. The cool thing about the sport class is it's the kind of the home-built airplane. So these are something that everybody can build in their own home. So the sport class, it's it's the guys working in the garage. It's the run what you brung. We don't have any rules. Ours is wide open. Any fuel or fluid you can do to make it go fast. Lots of different airplanes. Really cool to see the innovation that happens in the class. White tag, white tag. Constantly working, improving with speed. Final destination for all these in the sport class. We got Jeff Lavelle out front. And Vicki Benzing now has regained second place, one of our few female pilots in the field here in uh, race number six, the Lucky Two. But man, it's all about the Jeff Lavelle show. Well, you know, as Andrew said, the sport class in general has a very relaxed set of uh, limitations that encourages out of the box ideas and thinking in the interest of going faster as Jeff Lavelle's been doing. You know, a few years ago, we even had a leaf blower being used as a turbocharger a few years back. But, it, but Jeff Lavelle has opted for two turbochargers in place of a leaf blower, and it appears to be working quite well for him. And yeah, no leaf blowers in the field today. We did see the tank. We saw the NO2 tank. So there's, there's innovation going on constantly in this class, the sport class. You've got to love it. You've got to love the sound of those engines, too. The crowd really lapping that up, Steve. Over 400 miles an hour in an airplane you can build in your garage. Who'd have ever thought that? Jeff Lavelle going forward very, very fast as we are in our final lap, lap six of six laps to finish up this race. And it's all about Jeff Lavelle taking a giant step toward being in that gold race at the end of our competition here in Reno. There's your winner, Jeff Lavelle, race 39, the Super Glass Air 3. Look at that average speed, 381 plus miles per hour. Yeah, a huge statement early in race week in Jeff Lavelle's effort to reclaim the gold jacket and the title for the second year in a row. We're gonna drop down in size, but not in excitement. Coming up next, Formula One, Heat One, when we return. You're watching the Steel National Championship Air Races presented by Reno Tahoe. 
You know, they talk about Reno Tahoe, and you've seen that sign for years and years, the biggest little city in the world. Well, what that means is we may be out here among all this natural beauty in the desert and the alpine environs of Lake Tahoe, but this is a very sophisticated environment downtown. If you love this kind of stuff, if you love cutting edge arts and all that goes with that, this is a place for you. And our race upcoming, now this is a place for you if you like great things in small packages. That's part of the charm of this class of racing here. Formula One stuff, Steve, it is incredible what they're able to pack in something that weighs so little. That's right, now these guys are also the Grand Prix style standing start. This is where the green flag goes up, they get ready, the green flag goes down, they take off. This is where, again, strategy plays a huge part of the race because the flatter the pitch, the lower the gear, the quicker you get off the ground and onto the course. However, the laps don't start until they pass the steel checkered flag start pylon. That starts lap one. Three mile race course, we're going eight laps around it. That'll take us right at 25 miles total for these little bitty airplanes that can go 200 plus miles an hour, Steve. Yeah, the Formula One racing class was one of the oldest classes, started in 1936 as midget air racing. Uh, it's progressed into uh, the sport as we now would call F1 or Formula One. Uh, it's limited to the aircraft must weigh at least 500 pounds and a pilot and gear must weigh at least 150 pounds. Now keep in mind an airplane at 500 pounds, that's little more than half the weight of a Harley Davidson motorcycle. Engine, airframe, wing, less than half the weight of a Harley Davidson motorcycle. Man, oh man, your golf cart weighs more than these things by a long shot here. Incredible technology that these things can fly so fast and right now in the lead, it's gonna be you know, Ron Swade from Springfield, Georgia. We got an international uh, field here for sure. Uh, Ross Killen from Melbourne, Australia. Uh, Lionel Mojel from Bangkok, Thailand. And how about uh, Rizard Zato from Waller, Texas? How's that for exotic? Well, these airplanes are so popular because you can literally put them in a container and ship them anywhere in the world as Formula One Air Racing does. Now, there are, they are limited to a Continental O200 engine, that's 200 cubic inch. Uh, these engines are usually found in Cessna 150-152 training aircraft where they turn 2750 RPMs. Our racers will turn as high as 4500 RPMs out of these little O200 Continental engines. They do this by running a lot shorter prop. A standard 150 prop is 72 inches long. Our Formula One racers will run props as short as 54 inches, but they're much wider in the court. Now keep in mind too, a stock O200 engine makes 100 horsepower. These guys are making in excess of 160 horsepower. Again, RPMs are horsepower. That shorter prop spins a lot faster, allows them to get up on the RPM like they do. Boy, check it out. The big time racing is right at the front of the field, first and second. Steve Temple making a mad dash to get by. Swade Ron taking over the lead here, and uh, how long can he hold on to it? I don't know, but that was a bold move. Now, Tommy, I want to go back to the cockpit real quick. Look on the right. See that little red string going back and uh -huh. forth? That's what we call a yaw string. By putting that little string up on the front and watching that string go back and forth, that eliminates the weight of a turn and bank indicator in the instrument panel. Swade Ron getting passed again right there. In that case, it was Lionel Vincent Mojel from Bangkok, Thailand, and the GR7 Panther Hysteria. Now you'll notice also these airplanes all have fixed gear. They are required to have fixed landing gear, which means the landing gear does not retract. They have to have a fixed pitch prop so they can't change the pitch in the air. Again, going back to the strategy of picking the right prop to get you off the ground as soon as possible, but still have enough top end bang when you get to the end of the race. Here's 45, our leader, Steve Temple. That's one of those older, those Cassett model planes, right, Steve? Yeah, the Cassett and Shoestring Racers have historically been the, the racer's choice here in the Formula One class. And they were up until about 1991 when John and Trish Sharp came on the scene and won 15 consecutive championships in their little all-carbon fiber nemesis, which was designed in the back room of Lockheed Skunk Works. Changed the whole scene. Now, you'll see a lot of these older airframes but instead of flying the Hershey bar wing, that's the square wing, look at these tapered wings like the airplane right there in the front. That's one of the new carbon fiber style wings. They still have to have the same wing footage of 66 square foot, but they're using a lot more technology and airfoil design in these new racers. And we can watch that leaderboard and see that uh, Suede Ron then is still continuing to fall back in the field. That uh, decision for the prop setup for him did not pay off as we get into the mid part of this race into lap four. Yeah, that's the perfect scenario is what we talked about. He chose a flatter pitch prop to get off the ground and out in, this, out in the lead earlier. However, these guys that chose more of a, a 
a coarser pitch prop or a higher gear per se are now reeling him in as the race progresses. Boy, great racing reflected on the leaderboard. We got another big duel at the top two positions in this race. We got Ross Killen, the entry from Melbourne, Australia. Now the guy trying to run down Steve Temple and he's, he's doing everything it takes to get that job done. He's closing ground on him. Absolutely. It looks like all these guys are getting close to that bottom limit, that 50-foot limit of your altitude there, and I guess that's just part of it. You press, you press against the boundaries when you race at this level. Them back out in front, but look out, here comes Killen one more time. We're close to the white flag lap, six of eight right now. We're going to wind up with about 25 miles total at the end of this race right here. Now, Tommy, I've been enjoying the graphic down here in the right lower corner here. These engines did 80 to maybe 100 miles an hour tops as a training engine. I've been watching Steve Temple over 200 miles an hour on this entire course, even in the turns. That's impressive, that, uh, that 200 miles an hour plus, but still not enough to hold off. A charging Ross Killen coming in and trying to make a pass one more time. He didn't quite pull it off in that turn. Top profile shots like this give you a good indication. You can really see the difference between these new style tapered carbon fiber wings versus the old squared off Hershey bar style wings on the original Cassette Racers. And there we go, Ross Killen. Trying to get it done in one more turn here. This is a great duel between these two planes. They are gonna take it right down to the end. You know, that's a great cockpit shot there too, but I can honestly say as a pilot, you don't get the perspective of how close they actually are when they pass this lap traffic as they are as they go by Scott Holmes right now. Steve Temple still in the lead. These guys have all that to pay attention to and flying the airplane occupies a lot of their attention too. So it's a, it's a, it's a handful piloting one of these things at that speed with that sort of competition around you. Now keep in mind the new style aircraft with these carbon fiber wings. They're, when they pass one of the original Cassett wings, they have a closure speed of over 50 miles an hour as they come up on these aircraft. And those wings are serving Steve Temple well. He's so far been able to hold off for the most part, Ross Killen, but look at this. As we head into the white flag situation here as they go past the start-finish pylon into that final lap eight of eight. This is it, less than one lap to find out if they chose the right prop or not. Tommy, we're on the bell lap, here we go. Not much time left, and right now it's do or die for Ross Killen if he wants to get by. Race 45, Steve Temple, and it looks like, yes, he's able to do it, at least for the time being. Half a racetrack lap left to go, and he has overtaken Steve Temple. One turn left, here they go. One turn to make your move for glory. Ross Killen on top, and look at this. Lionel Mogul has entered the fray as well. He says, I want a piece of this action right here. He's catching up to the other two. He may involve himself in the ending of this race, too. As they shove the stick forward to try and get as much speed as possible as they dive for the steel start finish pylon. Checkered flag, checkered flag. Ross Killen, race number three, and look at there. At the end, it's going to be 22. Lionel Mogul from Bangkok, Thailand, taking over second place. So Steve Temple passed again. What a wild ending to this game incredible race. All sorts of big time moves in the last moment. You see it right there. Play for you one more time. Race 22, snatching second place. But our steel power move of the day, and I think you'll agree with this, Steve. This was that big move by Ross Killen in the final lap. A lot of patience, a lot of belief in what your plane can do, and that's what took him over the finish line first. Boy, that's a great example of some of the very, very competitive racing you'll see if you join us each morning out here at the National Championship Reno Air Races. Look at those final statistics right there. 210 miles an hour, the average speed for the top three teams. It was that close at the end. When we come back, bigger, faster, louder. Bad boys of air racing, your unlimiteds will be on the course. It's the Steel National Championship Air Races, presented by Reno Tahoe. Oh, you have got to get yourself some time in your life to Reno Tahoe to see this incredible race. Lots of reasons to come to Reno. Number one, 300 days of sunshine during the year. But when the sun goes down, this is an outstanding place as well. So many options, so many diversions, great bars and restaurants, lots of nighttime entertainment. A great way to enjoy this town 24-7 if you're up to it. Reno Tahoe nightlife is absolutely exceptional. Speaking of exceptional, this is it. It's time for the marquee class, the unlimited class, piston power, prop driven, that's it. The fastest piston airplanes in the world. 
by far some of the sexiest aircraft ever made. Built with one thing in mind, one sole purpose, and that was to end World War II through air superiority. These airplanes continue to be the favorite aircraft for unlimited racing here at Reno. And they were designed, nobody could dream or imagine they would ever make the horsepower they're now making or run the speeds they're now making. Unlimited is definitely the word that sums up these amazing aircraft. And last year was no exception. Our air race phenom, Steve O'Hinton, seven time current world air race champion, every time he looked in the mirror on his six, was decorated combat veteran Jay Consalvi, last year flying Checkmate, a fast airplane, but not fast enough to overtake Voodoo. This year could be something different. Yeah, it was yet another national championship for Steve Hinton, the all time. Winning is not only with Voodoo, but also with Strega. And he's going up against Consalvi, piloting Strega today. Strega's owner, Bill DeStephanie, has eight victories himself in the cockpit of this amazing aircraft. He liked what he saw last year in rookie Jay Consalvi. He decided to arm Consalvi with Strega for 2017. You know, uh, engine is uh, performing superb so far. Of course, that's subject to change at any moment, but right now it's top shape. We keep it top shape all week, we'll win. I can tell you this, when the red rocket runs, ain't nobody beat us. Simple as that. The engine's strong. Everything is doing what it's supposed to be doing. We're uh, using the fluids we're expecting to be using. Um, servicing has been pretty standard. Um, it performed exactly how we expected it to perform at Qualls, and we don't see any reason for it to do anything different today. This year we've both got the same engine builder. I feel very confident that the airplanes are uh, on par. I obviously have more faith in ours, which is why we're going to beat them come Sunday. But uh, I, I think this should be for some, uh, make for some good racing this weekend. we got three days of racing here. Anything can happen. I'm pretty confident. If we can hold it together, if we uh, got the lady riding with us, that's Lady Luck, we'll win. Once again, everyone's here to see this class race, and of course, they're here to see these two planes. This race is all about Voodoo and Strega, no doubt about it. Well, absolutely, and the anticipation's been building even more because Steve and Bob Button took Voodoo out and set a new piston single speed record of 531.53 miles an hour just before Reno. So we all expected young Steve-O's air race experience and the speed record to be a deciding factor. Jay Consalvi and Tiger DeStefani had something else in mind. Race is underway and everyone in the crowd always, their breath is taken away by the speed, the power, the sound and fury of these unlimited aircraft and those two jumping out in front is no one surprised. Again, 1,649 cubic inches of Rolls-Royce Packard V12 engines, normally making 1,700 horsepower. These guys are making over 3,800 horsepower in these V12s. Oh, you can talk about that sound all you want, but there's nothing like just turning us off and listening to the sound of these Mustangs in full song. Now, as they come past the finish line, what a great, great display of power, of pilot ability, and all the other elements that make a championship. This is early on in the heats, but there you go, Strega and James Consalvi taking the measure of Stephen Hinton and Voodoo. No matter what the outcome today, we have to call these two guys absolutely our Reno Tahoe Top Gun. Man, she felt great. Engine's running smooth and strong. No hiccups. I knew Steve was back there the whole time. I was probably thinking about him as much as I was thinking about my line, which I'm going to work on not doing tomorrow. Uh, a lot of good things about about my uh, my race today. A lot of things I want to work on. So, but I'm stoked. I mean, we're where we want to be. I'm in a stellar mood right now. It's, I'm stoked. So, uh, uh, yeah. I'm, just looking forward to Sunday. You know, it's just kind of egg them on, egg them on, egg them on. And we'll see how it works out. You know, the biggest challenge really isn't racing Strago or racing the other guys. It's maintaining your equipment and trying to get there till Sunday. You know, the engines are 75 years old. The best parts are in them, but you're making twice the horsepower they used to. Uh, <laughs> and this stuff gets pissed off. So that's the biggest battle that any team up here really experiences through a race week is maintaining the equipment at a level, you know, far superior to what it was designed to do. But what we've seen and heard is just a taste of what is to come. I feel certain you can book those two into the gold round. But it's early on, and when we come back, we're going to keep speed, the theme, more jets when we return to Reno Top. 
The Steel National Championship Air Races are presented by Reno Tahoe. Check out visitrenotahoe.com. Don't miss the 55th Annual Steel National Championship Air Races. Tickets available at airrace.org. And brought to you by Steel and the Steel Lightning Battery System. What can you do on a single charge? Here at the Steel National Championship Air Races, there's only one class where they say, guys, absolutely, we're cutting you off at 525 miles an hour. Of course, we're talking about the jet class, another jet race coming up. We get two for in today's show. Of course, again, our course is eight miles. It's the big course here at Reno. We're going around six times for about 46 miles of racing, Steve. Well, let's go to the cockpit with both some of our race pilots as well as our pace plane as they come down the chute to enter the course one more time. Race control jet pace with five gold racers, 90 seconds to the chute. Jet pace, race control, cleared on course. Cleared on course, jet pace. He's on board, everybody looking good. Don't push the line, 44, hold her back, hold her back. Bring it up on the line, looking good. 10 more seconds. Gentlemen, you have a race. As the pace plane pulls up and releases our jet racers onto the course in a position he's been before, race number five, Rick Vandom flying Ed Knoll's American Spirit takes him to the guide pylon. And if you're with us last year, you'll remember Rick Vandom. He's going for back-to-back -back victories here in American Spirit. Rick Vandom, of course, split in time with Mike Steiger, those two sharing the cockpit duties. Of course, this plane, very, very famous. This is the one to beat. A lot of L-39s, in fact, they're all 39s but one in this heat. Yeah, but the most famous L-39 in this race is, of course, Ed Knoll's number five American Spirit. Uh, Rick Vandom, an ex-Reno Air Guard pilot, has three victories in this aircraft. The airplane itself has five. So neither one of these guys, airplane or pilot, are strangers to the winner's podium. The L-39, the Albatross, is a Russian-made craft. Very, very popular, mainly for training of jet pilots and obviously moves very well around this big, big race course here. Right there's a shot of the only uh, odd bird in this field right there, the twin boom de Havilland Vampire, a fighter jet from just after World War II, piloted by Zach McNeil, a guy who feels very, very fortunate to be able to pilot this one in this important race. Many squadrons fly the famous Vampire jet. On short notice, these planes are ready to come to the aid of a fellow member which might be the victim of an aggressive sudden attack. Well, I got the privilege to fly a 1957 uh, Vampire made by de Havilland. Yeah, it was actually built in 1957. It's half wood, which people never believe it, uh, and it's half uh, aluminum. It was uh, built in the end of World War II, but it's actually a fighter jet, whereas most of these jets here are trainers. That's why it's so old, it goes so fast. Pretty much all last night for the last uh, 24 hours, John here and his uh, team over there at Ultimate Aviation have been uh, doing a repair. We had a little bit of a, an air seam come up, which uh, you can see the orange section right over here. Um, it basically peeled off a piece of the balsa and plywood that was under the aircraft while we were up at speed. And so we had to go to a model hobby shop and uh, buy balsa wood, birch plywood, and uh, rebuild the uh, whole, basically a little section of the airplane. It wasn't really structural or anything, but it was just, uh, it, the Vampire just uh, keeps on making you work in order to get, uh, get her back on the uh, uh, race course. White flag, white flag. As we head into the final lap, a jet made of wood. Nothing sounds more improbable than that, but take a look at the results. Take a trip back to 2015. Pete Zaccanino in the Vampire winning it all here in Reno. That's right. The little British to have on Vampire jets are a lot of fun to watch, but once again, the Russian-built Aero Vochedny L-39, especially in the hands of past champion Rick Vandom, outclassed the little vampire today. Yeah, as we mentioned earlier today, this is the youngest, this is the baby of all the classes. It hasn't been around for that many years, yet in that short period of time. This particular airplane and this pilot, Rick Vandom have pretty much established themselves as another dynasty. What a great cockpit shot as the Reno real estate goes past Rick's peripheral vision at the rate of two and a half football fields per second. Yeah, it doesn't take long to take a look at the desert when you're flying in one of these airplanes right here. Such incredible speed. Rick Vandom just taking it easy. Loose, ready to go, never challenged during the course of this race. For a speed of 501, almost 502 miles an hour. 
Second place, the Havilland Vampire coming in with Zachary McNeil. Second place and third place, David Culler Jr. in the American Patriot. The other L39 there in the top three. There are your final figures right there. Again, 501, almost 502 for Rick Vandom, an American spirit, and the next closest, well, 25 miles per hour slower. That's a dominant performance. The things we have seen today at the Steel National Championship Air Races from Reno Tahoe. We've got more on the way. It just gets more and more exciting as the week goes on with more on the line as we head toward the gold rounds. That's next time.